we're going to show you how to run a path analysis in Amos. So we're going to use this example. Here's your variables. Those are the boxes, right? The rectangles. The round circles are the error terms. But we're going to go ahead and start this in Amos. So please hold while I pull it up. So what we're looking at here is a causal model that was designed by at least some kind of research or some kind of literature. So what they're trying to do is the DV is the number of relapses, okay? So the different IVs are the amount of daily stress, perceptions of social support, the propensity for s substance abuse, and clinical depression scores, okay? So we're going to go ahead and replicate this in Amos now. Please hold. So here's the data sheet that's associated with this path analysis model. Here's your variables up here. So the first thing we're going to do is open Amos. you got to go to Analyze. It's way down here on the bottom, Amos 19. That's the version we're using. Click that. Give it a second. All right, first thing is, once you've got Amos open, you're going to go ahead and put in your measured variables. Those are the rectangles. You're going to click on the box. You're going to make one. Boom. We're going we're gonna to duplicate this by clicking the Duplicate button here. Duplicate. Duplicate a couple times. Click on that. And you just click and drag. Click and drag. Easy cheesy. Click and drag. Okay, and our last one is Relapse out here. And I think I'm going to change this into Landscape by going to, going to View. And then we're going to go to Interface Properties, and we want the Landscape, where are you? Landscape Letter, so now we got that. Apply, makes it a little bit easier to look at. Let me recenter, please hold. I'll move that one over a little bit. Got to move the little truck over, okay. Boom. So, so we got our little boxes. Those are measured variables. Next thing we do is we label the variables from the data sheet, okay? So this was stress. This was social. Hold on. This was social. This was substance abuse. That one's down here. This was judgment of depression. That's this guy. And number of relapses is here. So those are those. Let's clean these out. I'm going to go ahead and rename these with just one word so it doesn't look all messy. Please hold. All right, so to rename, you click one, you right-click, Object Properties. You can just get rid of the label. See that? Boom. Same with this. Get rid of the label. Stop that. Right-click, get rid of the label. Right click, get rid of the label. It's just getting boring. You can just click on that and you have to. Right click. Okay, so now we got the labels. So now it's time to draw the paths. I kind of forget what they are, so let's look at the original. So we got one headed arrows all over the place. I don't see any two headed arrows. So we got, uh, all right, give me one second. I got a burn to my memory. All right, so we're going to go from stress to social by picking this. So you're going to click, click. See how it goes from red to green? Isn't that pretty? So we got one from here to here. Yes, we do. We got one from here to here. Yes, we do. We got one from here to here. Yes, we do. So just click and drag, and I think there's one more from here to here. And there's one here to here. And that looks good to me. Next stop is we got to put in the error terms. So be very careful because exogenous variables do not have error terms. So that means we have an error term. This is your error term guy. We have one here. We have one here. We have one here. We have one here. We do not have one there. Okay. So last thing we're going to do is clean this up. Nope. So we can clean it up now. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this guy up now. We're going to hit the magic wand. Click that. Just click them all until it gets kind of nice. This one, you're going to have to move this one by picking the little moving truck. Click on it. Move it down here. And then clean it up again. Clean it up again. Okay, so now the arrows look pretty good. This guy isn't exactly on here. Let me see if I can't move them a little bit. 
at least put them on the thing, and then we'll clean it up a little bit more. So now we have to identify these as error terms. So what we're going to do is going to go up to plugins. We're going to name unobserved variables, and it should do it automatically, right? So error term one, two, three, four. So far, so good. I am very impressed. Okay, next step. So believe it or not, we're almost done, but we're preparing for the output. So we should probably go to view, analysis, properties, and we're going to tell this what we want on the output. So you're going to go to output, and we want the standardized estimate. That's going to give us the beta weights, and if there were any correlations, that kind of thing. And modification indices, that will allow the software program to make some kind of suggestions about adding paths to the model if it doesn't work out very well. But that's all we need there. Okay. Now we're ready to calculate it. We're going to go to this guy right here. It's like an abacus. So we're going to calculate. And it's going to ask us to save. So hold on. Okay, we named it. So now we want to see the real numbers. You're going to click to this little remote control. The second path diagram with the actual data calculated into it, it's going to give us the unstandardized B weights first. But we don't want those. We want the standardized beta weights, that kind of thing. So you're going to click this one. And it gives us all the standardized beta weights. And remember, for the standardized estimates, those are like the beta weights, You'll remember there was no error term for the beta weights. So that's why there's no error term here. Okay, so we're just looking at the beta weights between all of these variables. All right, here comes the money. We're going to go to the output. It has to be accessed through the view text button. But this is going to answer all our questions. Okay, it's going to tell us how good of a fit we have or have not. So we click on that and it gives us the money box. Please don't crash Mr. Computer. All right, right off the bat, this tells us our degrees of freedom. So 15 is the number of observations. How that works with our picture is, so we take the number of rectangles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We multiply that by one more than the number of rectangles and divide it by 2. So 5 times 6 is 30, divided by 2 is 15. That's where this comes from. And the number of parameters, which is estimated, is the number of arrows. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I get that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, plus the number of error terms. So there's one, two, three, four. So six plus four is ten, plus the number of exogenous variables. And there's one. So we have uh, 11 parameters. So six minus, I'm sorry, 15 minus 11 is 4, which is greater than greater than 0. So that means that this model is over-identified, which is good. If you had a degrees of freedom of a negative number, that means you would have to stop. That means it's, this model is not working at all. You could have your degrees of freedom equal 0. That's what we call just identified. Okay, and that, that's okay. But right off the bat, I'm looking at the chi-square. Chi-square test statistic, it's 70. That is huge. The p-value is less than 0 0.001, which means that there is a significant difference between the perfect model and your model. In other words, your model is not holding water. But we're going to look at some other information from the output to, that's going to tell us whether this is a good model or not. So please hold. That's true. All right, uh, we already answered the first question. This model was over-identified. Okay. 5 times 6 is 30 divided by 2 is 15. 15 observations, 11 parameters, 15 minus 11 is 4. So that means it was over-identified. So now let's see if this model is any good. Okay, the first measure we're going to look at is the semen. Let's go back to the actual output. And we're going to go to model fit. Okay, semen. This should be the same as your chi-squared test statistic, and it is. It's huge, and what this is saying is the same thing, that, that be, the difference between your model and the saturated model, and what that's what we call the perfect model. That means there's a significant difference between these two models. In other words, your model is not a good model. That's the first thing you look at. Second thing is GFI. Same thing. We want this number to be greater than 0.9. It's not. This is saying the same thing as the as the previous one. 
that your model is not a good model fit. We're going to look at a couple other ones. The um, What is it? The NFI. This number is way too low. It's saying the same thing, that the model is not a good fit. Any of these other ones? CFI way over here. Bam. It's saying the same thing. This number should be greater than 0.9. So, so far, this model is not a good model. But let's keep pressing on. The last model fit statistic we're going to look at is the RMSEA. And there it is right there. And again, we want this number to be less than 0.05. And this is obviously, obviously not less than 0.05. Okay, so you got to, you, everything, everything about your model is, is no good. So this is not a good model, but we're not quite done. All right, we're going to go to estimates. This is, okay, so this is a big difference between path analysis and multiple regression. You can still have significant regressions. You can have significant beta weights between the variables, but if the model fit is no good, that means that you should not have the variables explaining the causal paths the way you have them set up. So here's our estimates. All right, we're going to go to the regression weight. So here's stress and social. Let me move this where we could see it. So we're looking at p-values here. So between stress and the social support, it was significant. That's what this means. It was significant between the stress and the other. Uh, I already forgot what that stood for, but one of the other ones, it was substance abuse. Thank you. So... Between these two, not significant. Between these two, not significant. This was significant. So you did have a couple of significant uh, beta weights in there, correlations, path models, whatever you want to call them, path coefficients, but very few. So the last thing we're going to look at is the modification indices to see what the computer would suggest that we do. The single-headed arrow means you should add just a path coefficient or path model there. So what this is telling you, and you only want to pick one of them usually. You always go to the biggest one. So that means if, if you added a covariate between the error term number one and error term number four, it's going to increase the strength of your model. Down here, it means if you add a um, a path arrow between social support and relapses, it again would increase your model a lot. So that might make your model actual significantly good model in, instead of a significantly bad model. So that's it in a nutshell. Let me double check things real quick. Please hold. So to recap, this was not a good model. And the reason why was because the C-min, which was the chi-squared, is much too high. And it's saying that there's a significant difference between your model, that's the default model, and the saturated model is what we call the perfect model. It means there's a significant difference. In other words, your model is not good. And then we would look at, uh, there's a couple other ones, um, CIF or CFI, RFI. Those are our index fixes or index fits, and we know that they're no good. And then your, another main one is this RMSEA number. This should be less than 0.05, and it's not. So which says is you got a terrible model, and the model indication modification says that you should probably add probably just this one here, the largest one. You should add a covariate. That's a double-headed arrow between E3 and E1. So here's the regression weights. It's saying that, again, you should probably just add a causal arrow between social support and relapse, just that one. And how many of the paths were considered significant? Just the ones with the three stars or the p-value is less than 0 0.005. So you only got one, two, three of the paths were considered significant. And again, you could have significant paths, but that doesn't mean the model's any good. So overall, this model was not a good predictor of relapses according to the variables that they had chosen. So that's it. I hope you liked it. MGZ and Copilot. Copilot, you want to say something? Eh. Eh. No, don't, don't break your windpipe there. So we're out of here. Goodbye. So here's the data sheet uh, associated with this uh, path.